Well, good morning. Welcome back to our series, Summer Lovin'. And this week we are going to be in Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. And in this series, we have been looking at loving God and how we do that and the practical ways that we show our love for God. And, and then in a few weeks, we're going to talk about loving others and what that means, what that looks like. So, you know, it... In this world, when we take time to look around, love is definitely needed. And so as we walk through our series on missions, I, I kind of felt this strong pull to dive into that first aspect of love from Love, Learn, Lead. I mean, uh, to love God and love others. What does that mean? What does that look like? How does that work in our everyday life? Because too often... Too often our lives don't look that different from the rest of the world, uh, unfortunately. You see, I, I had recently read a study that was conducted by Dr. George Barna. Uh, the, he's the director of the Cultural Research Center. And his results showed, and I quote, Christians, uh, Christian has become somewhat of a generic term rather than a name that reflects a deep personal commitment to passionately pursuing and being like Jesus. And that is a sad discovery. It basically says that a significant majority of those who say they love Jesus live no differently than the rest of the world. And that it's not what that that's not what God envisions for his people. So through this series, we are seeking and learning how we can grow closer to God, to be transformed into his likeness as we seek to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. So, so over the next, over the last few weeks, uh, we have talked about the value of reading the Bible. We've talked about the value of worship, the importance of prayer in our lives. And today, today we are going to investigate the very thing that often goes hand in hand with what we talked about last week in prayer. You see, last week we talked about how we are busy people and, and our life can become all-consuming to the point that we have no time for even for God in our lives. In fact, I even said if you want to show your love for God, if you desire a relationship with Him, you have to slow down and find time. I went on to say you had to force time to spend with Him. And so this week, this week, we are going to look at maybe how you can find that time that we all so desperately need to seek God's face and fall more in love with Him. And because this is so important, we are going to read a longer section of passage than usual, but it is necessary for context and meaning. And so this is Jesus speaking in Matthew chapter 6. It is part of the Sermon on the Mount that actually began back in Matthew, the first part of Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Uh, but we are going to be starting later in chapter 6. So chapter 6, and we are going to begin in verse 5. So Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 5. And it says this, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their rewards in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray... Do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. 
Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head, wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is unseen. And your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Well, I am sure all of you remember uh, when COVID first hit America. March of 2020, and we were all quarantined, directed to stay in our homes and not to go anywhere unless absolutely necessary. And it was during this time that a meme, a joke kind of began to emerge on many of our social media pages while we were quarantined, uh, that we didn't have our daily routines and because we didn't have our daily things that go on, we ended up eating. In fact, eating probably a little bit too much, and we gained weight. And so the joke that was going around was that COVID-19 was related to this idea that most all of us gained 19 pounds. So COVID-19 was the weight we added on, I as well. And it happened because we were stuck at home, right? You're bored, and so you just get up and you frequent the refrigerator a bit too much. You just gra- you're just grabbing a snack, right? And then you grab another and then another, and before long, boom, 19 extra pounds. And uh, I think this is often similar to our spiritual life. And the relation to the statistic that I talked about earlier about how Christian has become somewhat of that generic term rather than a name that reflects a deep commitment to passionately pursuing and being like Jesus. You see, John Piper in his book, uh, A Hunger for God, he said it like this. He said, if you don't feel strong desires for the manifestation of the glory of God, it's not because you've drunk deeply and are satisfied but it is because you have nibbled so long at the table of the world and your soul is stuffed with lesser things and there's no more room for the great. And Christians have lived in the world and have continued to nibble at this and nibble at that and we have satiated ourselves enough in the busyness that we're involved in, that we've lost an appetite for God. And in doing so, we have become just like the rest of the world. So how do you show you love God? Well, I don't know. I I do what every other Christian does, right? And see where that's dangerous? It goes back just one chapter in chapter 5 of Matthew where Jesus says, For I tell you the truth, unless your righteousness surpasses the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you certainly, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, We need to be centering our lives on God. We must be reading our Bibles. We must be in prayer. Uh, The response, I don't have time. And that is where this week comes into play. Because the question for this week is, maybe you might need to fast. 
Have you thought about fasting? You see, fasting from a meal or social media, uh, TV, can greatly open up time for you to pray. And that's the first thing I want to emphasize this morning, is that fasting needs to be in conjunction with something else. All right, fasting needs to be in conjunction with something else. For example, without a purpose and a plan, fasting just becomes going hungry. You see, fasting must focus our attention on Jesus. In fasting, we seek to take the pains of hunger and transpose them into a yearning of our soul for God. And that is vastly different than just going hungry. I mean, I, I, I seriously, I literally have a friend who says, I never fast because all it does is make me hungry, and therefore all I do is think more about food. Well, it is at times like those that we need to turn our attention towards God, not food, the true giver of our daily bread and all that we need. One author said it like this, when your stomach starts to growl and begins sending your brain every feed me signal it can, don't be content to let your mind dwell on the fact that you haven't eaten. If you make it through with an iron will that says no to your stomach, but doesn't turn your mind's eye elsewhere. It says more about your love for food than your love for God. Wow, right? And so in short, let our time of fasting be time that is now available for us to connect with God. So let me do two things here. First, I want to point out that Yes, Jesus does call each and every one of us to fast. That's the first thing I want to do. And then second, I'm going to give you some suggestions, again, some guidelines to help get you started. So first, in our scripture reading just today, Matthew 6, 16, it says what? It, and, and this is what's funny. Almost, well, every translation I looked at across all translation. Usually you see minor differences, but this one in Matthew 6, 16, it is basically universal. It says this. What does it say? It says, when you fast or whenever you fast. King James Version says, moreover, when you fast. You see, Jesus isn't even giving us a possibility of maybe here. He's saying, when you fast, you will do it. When you fast, do not look all somber as the hypocrites do. They disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their rewards in full. But when you fast, right? So when, it's expected. Also, Matthew 9, 15. Just flip a couple pages, Matthew 9, 15. Uh, What's going on here is Jesus is approached by some disciples of John the Baptist. And they're like, hey, Jesus, you know, what, what's up? You know, we fast and the Pharisees fast, but you and your disciples don't fast. So what's up? And Jesus says in verse 15, he answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he's with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. Then they will fast. You see, Jesus expects us to fast. Clearly, he expects us to fast. And in so doing, provides it provides us, it pro we provide ourselves the opportunity to worship God in that free time, it, it, to force some time for us to pray. So what, is this, what does this look like? Uh, we talked about the, the directive to fast. Now, what does it look like? How do I get started? And again, every time, every time 
I say these things, I realize that this can become just another check in the box. But remember, this is not about just making ourselves dwell all day on what we've given up. But instead, it is intended to focus our thoughts on the one who ultimately provides, okay? So what does this look like? What does this fasting thing look like? What are some suggestions or guidelines kind of help get us started into this thing called fasting? Well, first, let me say fasting is hard. It sounds much easier in concept than it proves to be in practice. And honestly, it can be surprising how on edge we feel when we even miss a single meal. It sounds simple, and yet the world and our flesh and the devil conspire to introduce all sorts of complications that keep it from happening. So let's start down the slow path to good fasting. So here are a few simple pieces of advice. Number one, it doesn't have to be a fast from food. It doesn't have to be a fast from food. Listen, there, there are many who have medical issues of various forms where food is surely not the type of fast you should be doing. All right? Remember, this, is, this whole purpose of fasting is to provide space for us to fellowship with God. And so fasting can include things like fasting from TV or Facebook or social media, maybe fasting from golf or a hobby. Fasting is more than just food. So number one, it doesn't need to just be food. Number two, start small. Listen, don't go from never fasting to attempting a week-long bread and water only fast, all right? Or trying to say, okay, one month no TV or whatever it is. Start with maybe one meal a week for several weeks or an afternoon without TV. And then after a few weeks, maybe up it a little bit again as you provide time to feed your soul and you begin to desire God more. And by the way, it, if you're doing a food fast, let me also say it's never recommended that you abstain from water during a fast of any length. Drink your fluids, all right? Drink your fluids. Number three, and this one's kind of key. This is what I kind of alluded to earlier. Plan what you'll do instead of eating or your hobby or watching TV or whatever it is you're fasting from. Remember, fasting isn't merely just an act of self-deprivation, okay? It is a spiritual discipline that gives us time to seek after God, seeking more of God's fullness, which means we need to have a plan for a positive pursuit that we will be undertaking during that time that we've freed up from our fast, all right? So one significant part of fasting is the time it creates for prayer, for meditation on God's word, or even just reading scripture, or maybe it's even to provide time to do some acts of love for others. Uh, they say, they always say plans fail because we fail to plan. So before diving headlong into a fast, just craft a simple plan of what you're going to do in place of the thing you're fasting from. Connect it to your purpose for the fast of get, getting closer to God. So each fast should have a specific spiritual purpose. Identify what, is, what it is and design and focus your attention on that. Again, if you're not doing something to Without, if you're doing this without a plan or a purpose, it's not fasting, it's just going hungry, and there's a difference, okay? Finally, number four, consider how it will affect others. Listen, if every Friday night you and your spouse go out on a date night, don't choose to fast on Friday. I mean, it would be sad 
to lack concern and care for others as we attempt to focus on loving God, right? Because loving God and loving our neighbor, they go hand in hand. Good fasting mingles that love of others as well as our love for God. So if anything, others should feel more loved and cared for while we are fasting. So let me end, let me end today with a challenge. Let me challenge you to give up the bread of the world for the bread of life. Let me encourage you to, to fast, to take time and plan and focus on how you can fast to free up time for your heavenly father who desires a closer relationship with you let's pray this morning father god we come to you this morning thanking you for just another week a week of calling us closer to you into your loving arms lord we ask that over the next week we all find something that we can fast from in order to free up time for you so that we can begin to move away from looking like the world and instead begin looking like your children. Father God, continue to guide and direct us as we seek to honor you and glorify you in all that we say and do. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, again, thank you for joining us. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. We have a little bit of a surprise for you. So uh, look forward to seeing you next week. God bless. Have a great week.